Today, we're going to talk about the UV28 Plus from Baofeng. The kind folks over at Baofeng offered me this radio in exchange for a review, but they have no control over what I do or do not say in my review, which will bear itself out later in this video. The recent release is a 10 watt tri-band radio that features GPS location, including altitude. That's pretty cool. Access to the 1.25 meter, 2 meter, and 70 centimeter bands, airband reception, FM broadcast reception, weather band reception, channel cloning, and mobile app programming via Bluetooth. It features a 1.77 inch color TFT screen, which is nice to look at, but a bit of a challenge to see in bright sunlight. The 1000 channel memory is broken up into 100 zones, much like the BF-F8HP Pro, where channels 1 through 100 are zone 1, and 101 to 200 is zone 2, etc. and so forth. If you have a BF-F8HP Pro, you will be very familiar with this system. The 2200 mAh battery is USB-C chargeable, but the radio also comes with a cradle should you want to charge it that way. The antenna included in this version looks to be a copycat Nagoya NA771, at least to me. Now an interesting note about this radio is that after it had arrived, I immediately had a problem getting the radio to power on. After examining it for a bit and fiddling around, I did get it to power on, but I found that I could restart the radio just by tapping on it from pretty much any direction. Channel mode. Channel mode. Channel mode. Channel mode. I contacted Baofeng and notified them of the issue, and they said they would send out another radio. True to their word, but several weeks later, due to a delay involving tariffs, I had a second UV28 Plus in hand. This one worked, but I was curious to find out what exactly went wrong with the first one. I swapped the battery from the new radio into the original radio and had no issue. That made me think it was the battery pack, and sure enough, putting the old battery into the new radio caused the same problem. My guess is that there is a loose connection somewhere in the battery, or the plates in the back are too recessed to keep contact with the connectors on the back of the radio. I'm not quite sure, and I really didn't feel like investigating any further since my issue had been solved with the new radio. In any case, this is bad news, because according to Baofeng's website, the only way to get an extra battery is to buy the combo pack of the radio that ships with two of them, which is a shame and a pretty big knock against it already. I find the UV28 Plus to be very similar to the Radioddity GM30 Plus, and frankly identical, but tuned to the amateur radio bands. The shortcut keys are the same, the interface feels the same, even the radio body itself is the same for all intents and purposes, and that's good because I really liked the feel of the GM30 Plus. But the problems with the UV28 Plus aren't with its fashion, they're with its function. First, the app you must use to program the radio via Bluetooth is cumbersome and very poorly implemented. This is not only reflected in my personal experience with it, but with the reviews on the Apple App Store for the app. The user interface is broken in some spots, not showing what selections are available, and data management of your saved configurations is anything but straightforward, and there are other issues. Also, this radio is not fully supported by Chirp. You can use either the UV21 GPS or UV17 GPS to program its channels, but neither one will program the 1.25 meter band for you. It will tell you that it's out of band because the UV17 and the UV21 don't actually transmit on 1.25 meters, so you're stuck. Second, this large radio only sports a 2200 milliamp hour battery. I find it shocking that a radio as physically large as this doesn't come with something larger than the equivalent of the expanded battery for the original Radioddity GM30. Yeah, that one, that GMRS radio that's been around for a really long time, my favorite, and it's pretty small. Same battery life. And again, aftermarket batteries are not available for purchase, at least not at the time of this recording. Maybe Baofeng will change that, but as of now, you have zero options. Power-wise, it's fine. They say it's a 10 watt radio and it outputs 10 watts on VHF and UHF. I didn't check 1.25 meter because, I don't know, I just didn't feel like it. But of course, you know, it's probably fine as well. If VHF is fine and UHF is fine, I don't expect anything different from the 1.25 meter. Uh, and anyway, frankly, the difference between 5 and 10 watts is so negligible on your signal, 
you should probably just keep all of your radios to five watts and save your battery life. On this, that would be the medium setting. On other radios, that's the high setting, but five watts, that's standard for HTs. That's what you want to keep it on. Now onto the one issue that I find to be the make or break for any amateur radio I purchase or receive. Does it have spurious emissions? And if it does, how bad are they? And that's where I'm really getting discouraged by Baofeng with all of their new radios that loosely fall into the 5RM family, this one included. And by that, I mean basically any of the new ones with a color screen. I have yet to get one of these radios that is clean on transmit. I've tested a couple of 5RMs, uh, UV26, and various others. None of them were clean, and in fact, many of them were really bad. So how does the UV28 Plus stack up? Well, let me show you. Okay, so here we are at the test bench. A quick uh, review for any of you that are new to this. This is a Spectrum Analyzer. It's called a Tiny SA Ultra. Here we have my UV28 Plus going into a 40 dB attenuator so I don't fry this. So what are we looking for? Uh, as an amateur radio operator, it's your responsibility to make sure that your transmissions are clean. What do I mean by clean? I mean no harmonics in the rest of the spectrum above what would be considered 40 dB down from the fundamental. So in this case, we have 146.52, that's our fundamental. Any spurs that show up, meaning harmonics in, on other frequencies, need to be 40 dB below that. Also, they need to be less than 25 microwatts in power. That's what this blue line represents. That's 16.02 dB that translates into 25 microwatts. So uh, let's see how the UV28 Plus does. Now we're only going to check VHF because that's the only thing that matters. Um, you don't have to check UHF and um, yeah, basically it's pass or fail on this. So here we go, 146.52, you can see that. And let's take a look. I'm holding it so that it has a chance to level off. I want to give it a fair shake, but as you can see, that's terrible. That really irritates me. So it's about 20 dB below the fundamental, half of what it needs to be, and it is way above 25 microwatts. So that is the end of the line for the UV28+. Plus. So the UV28 Plus is a disappointment. If you're in the market for a GPS enabled HT, I would recommend the BF F8HP Pro with a caveat. The early models seem to be dirty. I had to send my first one when it was first released back in twice after discovering it was out of compliance due to spurs. The one I have now is clean. And I would recommend buying yours from Amazon. There's an easy return policy. Plus, BTEC does offer their support and warranty service. Even if you buy it from Amazon, you just have to provide a receipt. As for the UV28 Plus, I can't in good conscience recommend it. I really wish Baofeng would clean up the transmit on their new generations of radios. Frankly, I'm not going to review any of the recent value-priced Baofeng amateur radio lineup until I get assurances from Baofeng that the radio will pass spectral purity tests because honestly, it's a waste of everyone's time. Now, if you're looking for a reliable tri-band radio with USB-C charging that's also clean, unlocked, and affordable, I would highly recommend the M5R. You can get a pair of them for less than 32 bucks on Amazon. I have a set of these and they're great, plus they work with all UV5R batteries and accessories, affiliate link below. That'll do it for this episode. Please leave your thoughts and comments below. And if you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're so inclined. And remember, when it comes to tech, I've got you covered.